She turned eight years old. That's my girl. That's my girl. Anyway, I just want to say hello to everybody. Thank you so much, y'all, for celebrating with us, and thank you for coming back. And today we have got a show. Oh, we're getting ready to do some special things on the Wiley and the Show. I'm going to change a few things for this new season. So y'all get ready. Strap up your boots because we're going to do some stuff. The rubber's going to meet the road right here on the Wiley and the Show. If I tell you the truth, you better get ready. Today we have Apostolic versus Apostolic calling in all the way from Tupelo, Mississippi and Las Vegas. We getting ready to do it right here on the show. We'll see you in a minute. Did you realize that right now, one of every three drivers on the road is cruising around in a state of skepticism? Why? Because they're full of questions about how much value their car insurance company is actually bringing to the party. And the way these drivers are getting answers is by shopping and comparing. If you're one of them, State Farm Agent Mike Whitford in Las Vegas can help you get to a better state. That starts with getting to know you as a person, not just a policy number. Then Mike can help put together the coverage package that has you written all over it. Make sure you're comfortable with what that coverage will cost and with the level of service you'll get. Not just for Mike Whitford, but from the 68,000 State Farm Associates who support them 24-7, 365 days a year. If all of that is starting to make you feel a little less skeptical, well, now's the time to call State Farm Agent Mike Whitford in Las Vegas at 702-463-2400. That's 702-463-2400. And get to a better state with State Farm. Okay, everybody, we are back right here on the Wileena Show, and y'all know I'm excited. I stay excited. What can I tell you? I don't know what else to do but just simply be excited, okay? Y'all better join in with us, sister, and get some of this happy juice. <laughs> Okay, listen, I've got my guest with me today, and I'm excited about that as for, uh, for sure. And I have one wonderful guest sitting right here with me, and I'm going to introduce him. And then I have another guest that is on the line waiting for me to... Uh, waiting for me to call uh, to uh, introduce him on the line. And so I'm going to start out with my guest that's sitting here with me right now. Looks like I'm getting a little feedback in my in my system here, but that's okay. I hear myself twice. You know, I can hear myself over and over, y'all. I get happy when I hear myself again and again. 
<laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, Bishop T. Lester has been preaching and teaching the good news of Jesus Christ for 29 years. He has been a bishop for the last eight years. He first started out as a young person under the leadership of Pastor Raymond Roberts of Holy Temple Church of God in Christ from 1976 to 1985. In June of 1985, he was baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of his sins. From June 1985 to 2002, he was under the administration of evangelist Leela Watley and later on later on pastor Willie Holland of True Light Apostolic Church of Palm Springs California there he served as an usher treasurer member of the youth board member of the choir brotherhood and pastor committee in 2002 he moved to Las Vegas Nevada smart man where he served under the leadership of Bishop Walter Burks of Paradise Apostolic Church as a pastor there he taught and preached the holy divine word of God to the congregation in 2005, Bishop T. Lester stretched out on the vision that God had given him for preaching and teaching the gospel at Bible Way Apostolic Ministries. There at Bible Way, he encourages and supports the growth of the saints, visiting the sick, giving the, uh, the necessities of the saints, and encouraging others' ministries to preach and teach the holy gospel of Jesus Christ to the community. And I just want to welcome to the show Bishop T. Lester. How you doing, Bishop? My pleasure being here. All right, wonderful, wonderful. And you know, uh, uh, everybody that's really been a regular uh, listener and viewer of the Wiley Show, they know you've been here before, right? Yes. Okay, and you're back again for what? I'm back to just to give feed some more information to the people. Okay, well, you just didn't say what I wanted to hear. Uh, um, what? What? You, now, come on, now, what you think I want you to tell me? Wants, she wants a rubber to meet the road. <laughs> All right, you better recognize now. You know what show you are. <laughs> All right, yes, indeed. I want the rubber to meet the road in here today. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce my second guest. We have a guest, another guest calling in long distance. And this is Marcello Stewart, born in Mount Bayou, Mississippi in 1981. He grew up in Mississippi half grew up in Mississippi half of his life in 1997 him and his mother joined a Pentecostal apostolic church named Solid Rock Pentecostal Apostolic Church in Plantersville Mississippi in 1998 the month of December he repented for the remission and was baptized in Jesus name and he tarried at the altar for the space of three months and on March the 27 1999 he received the gift of the Holy Ghost now 15 years later he is glad to be running for Christ, talking the Bible, pointing someone towards heaven. Also, I want to wish him a happy belated birthday. And this is Brother Marcello Stewart calling in live from Tupelo, Mississippi. Brother Marcello, are you there? Yes, uh, Ms. Juanita, I'm here. I'm, I'm glad to, uh, to be on your show. Very excited, very honored to be here on your show today and just to be able to tell the truth about Jesus Christ. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, now if you can't say Wileena right, just say Queen, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just make it easy on yourself and say Queen. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you know what? Would you like to give a shout out or say anything special right quick before we take a break? Oh, I would just like to say, um, you know, I thank God for Jesus and and it's time for the apostolic people to rise up, stand up. Oh. All right, well, I guess y'all going to rise up then. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you rise up right now on the Wild Inner Show. How about that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, and uh, I, I take it that uh, the weather's nice out there, right? Yes, yeah, so the weather's oh. nice. The sun is shining. And okay, all right, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. The rubber is going to meet the road. See you in a minute. Did you realize that right now, one of every three drivers of the road is cruising around in a state of skepticism. Why? Because they're full of questions about how much value their car insurance company is actually bringing to the party. And the way these drivers are getting answers is by shopping and comparing. If you're one of them, State Farm Agent Mike Whitford in Las Vegas can help you get to a better state. That starts with getting to know you as a person, not just a policy number. Then Mike can help put together the coverage package that has you written all over it. Make sure you're comfortable with what that coverage will cost and with the level of service you'll get. Not just for Mike Whitford, but from the 68,000 State Farm Associates who support them 24-7, 365 days a year. 
If all of that is starting to make you feel a little less skeptical, now's the time to call State Farm Agent Mike Whitford in Las Vegas at 702-463-2400. That's 702-463-2400 and get to a better state with State Farm. Uh, I want to say thank you very extra special thank you to our sponsor. He's a wonderful guy, Mr. Mike Whitford. Check him out, okay? Get your car insurance, life insurance, house insurance, any kind of insurance. Just insure yourself. <laughs> You're in a better state if you would stay firm. Anyway, um, I just I want to go ahead and get started with the questions because look here, you guys. You know, I I have so much to say and so much information that I want to gather from the apostolic uh, denominational belief and teaching that uh, uh, we just don't want to waste no time. All right, gentlemen, are y'all ready for the rebel to meet the road? Oh yes. Oh yeah. All right. Well, that's all I need to hear. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, uh, each of you a couple questions here, and uh, I'll give you both the opportunity to elaborate. Bishop, uh, do you use the Bible? Is that what your your faith is based on, the Bible? Yes. Any particular version or just the Bible as a whole? Uh, the, the Bible, the original uh, translator of English is the King James Version. Okay, so you use the King James Version for your studies and yes. your teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, uh, Brother... Uh, Stuart, what about you? Uh, yeah, I also use the uh, King James Version, the Holy Bible, for my uh, studies. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, and what and what uh, is your day of worship, uh, Bishop? Uh, what is your day of worship uh, for your main worship service? What day do you worship? I say my main worship day is uh, both Saturday and Sunday. Okay, Saturday and Sunday, and and okay. Now I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop with you right here for a second because I need you to, I need you to clarify with me, uh, why, why do you do Saturday and Sunday? The reason why, simply the reason why I do Saturday. Saturday is the Sabbath of the Lord, and, and that's the day where He rest. On the seventh day, He hollered that day, and He said that that day was holy and sanctified, and that day you don't do no work. So since Christ has done it from the very beginning. That's an example that he set for us. And now, no, uh, Sunday is the first day of the week. Also, he's risen on the first day of the week. So therefore, that's, that's my number two days that I love to worship the Lord, which I worship the Lord every day. Okay. But my, my, my main two days is Saturday and Sunday. That's okay. the reason why. Okay, so that's when you have service, worship service at your church is Saturday and Sunday. Yes. And you do Saturday because of the Sabbath. Of the Sabbath. The seventh day Sabbath. Right? right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you do Sunday because it that's the is the day that he rose. Uh, for the resurrection day. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh Brother Stewart, can you tell me what is your day of worship, please? Uh our day of worship is on a Sunday. Worship on Sunday. We actually go to church twice on Sunday, Sunday morning and Sunday evening. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. Okay, so your day of worship is, is strictly Sunday. Strictly Sunday. We have Wednesday night Bible classes. Okay. All right. Uh, Bishop, do you have Wednesday night Bible class as well? Uh, we have Tuesday night Bible study. Okay, Tuesday night. Okay. Now, you're both apostolic, am I correct? Yes. Okay. So... I'm trying to see what's the difference here, why one apostolic worships on uh, the seventh-day Sabbath and Sunday, and then the other apostolic only worships on Sunday, and then, of course, the, the Tuesday and the Wednesday Bible study, whatever. So, I'm, But your main days of worship is what I'm looking at right now. We're trying to clarify your main days of worship. So I'm going to go with Elder, I mean, uh, uh, Brother Stewart here. Uh, Brother Stewart, is there a reason why you only worship your main day of worship is on Sunday? And uh, you, don't, you don't do the Saturday, the Sabbath, you called it the Sabbath day, right? The Sabbath day. Sabbath, Sabbath day. Okay, the Sabbath day. Well, our main worship days is on Sunday. Now we we, we believe in I mean, we believe in Jesus all seven days because if anybody wants to come up and ask us a question or, or someone needs to be led by led in, in a certain way, we it's really seven days a week you worship and believe in God. But our main worship day is on Sunday. And we don't want to we don't want to not do what He say on Monday and then wait all the way till Sunday. Okay, okay, so. You, you're doing what he says to worship on Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, Bishop, you say you're doing what he says to worship on on Sabbath and Sunday. Yes, and, and like like the preacher said, each and every day, because 
when, when the church was birthed on the day of Pentecost, you look at Acts chapter number 2 and verse 46, uh, they, they continue daily in the temple on one accord. So that's the everyday thing. Okay. So the days of worship really has been expanded. Okay. So but, now, but explain day, that. But the seven-day covenant still stands. But but like I say, the days has been expanded. So we're supposed to worship the Lord every single day. Seven, seven days, days a, week. a week. Okay. But your main, when you gather all your people together, because when you say worship every seven days a week, that's more of an individual type thing. Am I right or wrong? That's yes. more of you, you yourself personally are supposed to worship every day. But when you gather your people together in your building, that's a certain day out of the week that you call your main worship day, right? Right, which is which is Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday. Okay, and so, um, all right, I'm just trying to see what what's the difference here, uh, because we're both you're both apostolic, but it just looks like there's a difference in the in the day of worship here. Uh, so what that's telling me is even though there's even though there's apostolic. Uh, even though you're apostolic, you're both apostolic, and maybe because you're in different parts of the country or something. I don't know. <laughs> you still have something different going on there, even though you're under the auspices of the same teaching and belief. Am I correct, guys? Right. We got a lot of uh, brethren. Um, like I say, we don't we don't harp over days, but but long as you know the truth, and as much as people know, they should should follow what they, what they they know. Okay. And then study to learn more. Okay. About it, because if you look at Exodus chapter 30, 31 and and verse sixteen, uh, the Sabbath covenant is a is a continuous perpetual. That means there's no end to it. Okay. All right. So there's no end to the seven day Sabbath is what you just said. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Let's. Uh, uh, okay. So. Um, we're going to, we, <laughs> okay, we get ready to take a break, y'all, because uh, I got to gather my thought process here, and uh, I got some more questions for these gentlemen. We're going to take a break, and uh, when we come back, y'all know what's going to happen. <laughs> the rubber don't meet the road. All right, now that's what the brother said. All the way across the country, let's go. We'll be right back. Did you realize that right now, one of every three drivers of the road is cruising around in a state of skepticism. Why? Because they're full of questions about how much value their car insurance company is actually bringing to the party. And the way these drivers are getting answers is by shopping and comparing. If you're one of them, State Farm Agent Mike Whitford in Las Vegas can help you get to a better state. That starts with getting to know you as a person, not just a policy number. Then Mike can help put together the coverage package that has you written all over it. Make sure you're comfortable with what that coverage will cost and with the level of service you'll get. Not just for Mike Whitford, but from the 68,000 State Farm Associates who support them 24-7, 365 days a year. If all of that is starting to make you feel a little less skeptical, well, now's the time to call State Farm Agent Mike Whitford in Las Vegas at 702-463-2400. That's 702-463-2400. And get to a better state with State Farm. Well, uh, Brother Stewart, what is your worship style? Does, it, the, does the men and the women sit together? And, you know, what is your worship style? Um, yes, ma'am. The men and the women, you know, sit together. Uh, if we don't separate, uh, you know, for as you know, because you have married people in, in our uh, beliefs and uh, the men and the women, they all sit together. Okay, uh, uh, Bishop. Uh, I'm just like the preacher. We all sit together as a as a family. Okay, uh, worship style meaning. Uh, what is your worship style like? Is it charismatic, or are you uh, co conservative? You know, do they jump, shout? Do they sit still? Do they cry? Do they what 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 happens, uh, Bishop, under your worship style? It's it's a time where we sit. It's a time where we we jump, and it all depends on the move of the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is subject to change the service in any given time. Okay, now you just said Holy Ghost. What is that? The Holy Ghost, the indwelling spirit of God that dwells down inside of a believer of Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's something that people get? That's something that people receive. You can't get it. You can only receive it. It's a gift from God. Okay. Uh, uh, Brother Stewart, mm -hmm. is your worship style charismatic or same question? Uh, yes, uh, it depends on the Holy Ghost. We can... You could be in the form of, of a praise team singing, and the Holy Ghost get hit. And, uh, you know, somebody might speak in tongues. Sometimes you have interpretation of tongues. Uh, 
whatever way God want to take over the service, that is exactly what's going to happen. Okay, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> Oh, hold on a minute now. You, you're taking me with this Holy Ghost thing. What is this Holy Ghost? You know, y'all need to clarify what Holy Ghost really is. To some, In layman terms, we need it clarified elementary style. Okay, what is Holy Ghost? Uh, uh, go, go ahead, uh, Brother Stewart, and then uh, Bishop, I'm going to allow you to elaborate as well. I need you guys to be, break that down, okay? Okay. Jesus promised, uh, Jesus promised the disciples. He told them in uh, Luke 24 and 49, he said, go into the city of Jerusalem and tell them to you be endured with power from on high. And there was 40 days he walked with the disciples, and it was 10 days from Luke 24 and 49 till the day of Pentecost. And what the Holy Ghost was, it was a gift. It was a promise that Jesus, that Jesus told them he was going to send back once he was taken up. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came down. They was up there praying and, and tearing for whatever this promise was Jesus was talking about. And when, when the Holy Ghost fell, the Bible says they speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them other uh, utterance. So the, the Holy Ghost is the evidence of, of, of the, of, uh, the speaking of tongues is the evidence that someone has received the Holy Ghost. It's a promise of God. All right. I'm, I'm still, I am still feel a, a little man, just and, and, proud and, here. But go ahead, uh, Bishop. Amen. It's, and it's all like the preacher said, and it's also is a comforter that will lead and guide you to all truth and righteousness. And it bring all things back to your remembrance. So the Holy Ghost simply is the indwelling Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God. Uh, it's, a, it's just another it's word It's a for, spirit that comes in you. Right. It, it's just another word for spirit because you cannot see a spirit. So another yeah. word for spirit is ghost. Okay. And since his very nature is holy, so we just say Holy Ghost. Okay. So the Spirit of God comes into your body. Right. Is that right? Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. I got it right from both of y'all. Yes. Okay, so when the Spirit of God comes into your body, then, uh, okay, <laughs> then what happens? It affects That's when, it, that's when the, the, somebody uh, uh, speaks in tongues or they, they feel the, the gift of God. Okay, uh, is that what we call glossolalia? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so, uh,. They performed the act of glossolalia when they received the spirit, when the spirit mm -hmm. comes into their body. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes it's, it's gibberish. Sometimes it's it's uh because you grow in the spirit as, as you begin to read the Bible and study the Word of God and stay with God. You, you grow even in tongues. You maybe when you first receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you'll start off in gibberish. But it, uh, you what you mean like gibberish? Stick with God. Gibberish? Does that mean no, don't nobody know what you're saying? Yeah. Gibberish means don't nobody know what you're talking about, right? Not necessary. It's it, it means that you you speak in a foreign language. Okay, but who this, who this, understands this language here? Whoever God given a gift of interpretation. So now, if nobody don't inter interpret that with somebody speaking, that means they speaking to themselves and speaking to God, and God is edifying them. But there's an interpretation that means that it's supposed to edify everybody that's there. Okay, well, I think I'm going to get off of that subject. I believe that's a whole nother show. I think I'm going to have to do a whole show on this right here, and probably with, with y'all, with your denomination. There's, a, 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 there's plenty of denominations out there, and all of them don't believe in this tongues, glossolalia, and Holy, Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit. So, we'll have to come back. Maybe I'll have to bring uh, you gentlemen back, and you'll have to give us a little bit more uh, education <laughs> on the uh, Holy Ghost and the Gloss of Lydia and all that good stuff. Okay, what is the name of God in your denominational uh, belief? Bishop? Uh, we call him, G in English, we call him Jesus. You call God Jesus? Yes, that's his name. That's his well, who is God? God, God is Jesus. God is a state of being, which means supreme being, the creator of all things. But even he got a name. Okay, so, well, what is his name? His name is Jesus. Because many times God used many names and titles to identify himself to mankind. Okay, so under the auspices of your teaching, your belief, God is Jesus. Right. That's his name. Uh, Brother Stewart. Mm -hmm. In Tupelo, Mississippi. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> you, what we is his believe, name? We believe that God was Jesus. Jesus is God. Because the scripture says in uh, Isaiah uh, 6 and 9, uh, 
Well, he's actually a nine, nine and six. He says, my best college one, I'm just trying to give him a good mood, should be up on his shoulders. And Dr. Carlos named wonderful counselor, the mighty God. So that lets me know that Mary's baby was the mighty God and the everlasting father. Okay, now some people say that Jesus and God is two two separate two separate um beings or people or whatever you want to call them. Uh, it, it, uh some people say God is a is a being and Jesus is a person. God is a spirit and Jesus is the flesh. Now I'm just saying what people have said on my show in the past and so y'all need to I need y'all to uh, help me out with that. Under the auspices of apostolic belief, is Jesus flesh? You sound like you're saying Jesus and God is all in one, the same. Yes. They're, they're not, it's not Jesus no flesh. And, okay. It's no separation. Okay. Uh, that's, that's the heaven name that been revealed. At that time, when Isaiah spoke in uh, Isaiah chapter number 9, verse 6, Isaiah only expound on the name, but the name is Jesus. Okay, so brother uh, Stuart, are you on the same page with that? Yeah, so, yes, sir, I am. Uh, actually, you have another scripture, which is First uh, Timothy three sixteen, and this is what happened to God. The Bible says that God was manifest in flesh, and the word manifest means made known. God was made known in flesh. Uh, seen of angels, teachers of Gentiles, believed on him. Believed on him as well and received up in the glory. Now, when was God ever received up in the glory left except he be Jesus? Okay. Amen. Amen. Is that what you said? Amen. Amen. Because he, he said, Son of angels. In fact, that was the first time that the angels saw God because no, no one can look up on God at any time and live. But God made it possible when he manifested or made himself known in the flesh. So it happened when the day that Jesus was born in the flesh, the heaven hosts came down to worship him there because it was the first time they saw God in the flesh because normally when angels go up before the throne of God, they have to cover themselves with wings because his glory was too strong to look upon. So he made it possible for all mankind that they can be able to see him, the angels can be able to worship him. By making Jesus. But by manifesting himself in flesh, by him choosing a woman to bring forth him in human form. Because without the shedding blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So that's why he had to come and get a body to be able to shed some blood. Interesting. All right, well, y'all, <laughs> tell you what. <laughs> y'all just, y'all be telling the sister some things on the Wiley show. I just be learning a lot from uh, all these different folks. Okay, well, listen, uh, so I just, my next question was, who is Jesus to your belief and what is his name? So it looks like y'all have already answered that for me uh, because you're saying that Jesus and God is one and the same. Well, what about the people that say there's three? God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and then the Holy Ghost. Well, well, let me what what do that. you guys, do you guys fit into that equation? Or do you well, agree well, me, with that? Let me, let me clarify that because some Yeah, you clarify that, to, Bishop. They don't know how to break that down. <laughs> you break it down then. Jesus is the Father in creation. Father, Father means provider. And he's the son in redemption. He became the son of man in order for us to become son of God so that we can receive the sonship. So Jesus is the son of God, which means he's the very God himself. He became son so we can become sons. And he's the Holy Ghost, which means he's the spirit of God. It's one God doing all that. Those are the three roles that people speak of. But but really, God plays more than the three roles in our life because he's the great I am. And I am can be anything we need him to be. No dead air on the radio. Okay, so <laughs> what 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 are you uh where are you fitting into this uh uh brother Stewart from out there in, in Mississippi? Yes, sir. I I also believe that because in the old testament God was a, a spirit, in the New Testament God became flesh. Where the flesh not walking around here today, so now we have the Holy Ghost. I always like to tell people one day I was an infant, then I became a teenager, and I'm an adult. I was three, but it was just one of me that did all three. What you want me to give you a high five or something over here? <laughs> well, I'm gonna give you a high five. Amen. You get a high five from Mississippi. He, he trying oh, to get yeah. a high five over there, okay? In Mississippi, oh, yeah. he reached oh, across. Yeah. <laughs> and I like to add what, about what the preacher said. It's just like us. We have a body, we have a spirit, and we have a soul. We just we just one person all together. God the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. We just one all together. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right, well, it looks like we got a lot going on in that area. I want to talk to you gentlemen about um, uh, uh, just, well, let me let the callers know. Callers, you can call in if you like, okay? If you like, you can call in. We still keep talking about some things here because I got a few questions, a few more questions for these gentlemen. And, of course, this is part one, so, you know, we'll be back next week with part two with Apostolic versus Apostolic. Uh, so, 702-650-5588. That's 702-650-5588. And if you're calling long distance, 1-800-366-8883. Uh, uh, that's 1-800-366-8883. And be respectable to my guests. Of course, you can stay on the line if you like. We agree to disagree right here on the morning show. And uh, we also, I'd like for you to email me, too, if you if you will email me. And, uh um, you can email me at Wild in the TV Show at AOL.com. That's Wild in the TV Show at AOL.com with your questions and comments and suggestions and things like that. And we've got a lot of suggestions for new shows coming up in the future, so I'm looking forward to doing that. But anyway, uh, and when the callers call in, we do give the callers priority, and we answer whatever questions they have for, for my guests. Ask my guest questions. Don't ask me nothing, y'all, because I don't know nothing. I'm just here. You know, I'm just here. Okay? So, uh, it looks like we have a call coming in, but I'm going to go ahead and and, uh, and just wait for the, uh, my production guy to get that car ready. Uh, men and women um, in your under your denomination, no belief, uh, and you gentlemen can correct me if I'm wrong, men's apparel worn by women. Under the apostolic teaching and faith, does your denomination teach that women are not to wear pants, shorts, pedal pushers, jeans, dungarees, slacks, or any other clothing design like men's wear? Uh, uh, Miss, I mean, uh, Brother Stewart? Uh, yes, we do teach that because um, I think it's uh, Deuteronomy uh, 22 and 5. Two and two and five said that a woman should not wear what pertains to a man. Me shall a man put on. Me shall a man wear what pertains to a woman. And the reason we do that is because we have to be separate. We have to look separate. If uh, if you have two up there and, and, and they're just the same, one is saved and one is not, you won't be able to tell the difference. Okay, so you say, so you saying that under your under your teaching at, at your facility, your denomination of belief, women do not are not allowed to wear pants at any given time or just under the auspices of worship. No, it's not. It's not. A, they're, they're not allowed. We try to teach because you can't say you can't do that. You can't do that. So once you begin to learn and once you begin to grow and and and, and things of that nature, then you you understand. Like see these ladies, they have not wearing any pants or. or Anything like that because if you see a man coming in with a dress on, it, it looks pretty funny, vice versa. Okay, well, I wanted to. <laughs> Okay, look here. Let me go over here to Bishop. Uh, I, you know what, well, y'all, y'all really gotta, y'all gotta help me up with these clothes now, cause I'm, I'm, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm 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 just trying to see what we go you know do here for the women with these with wearing pants and stuff. But anyway, let me take this call right quick, and then go uh we'll get Bishop. I give you the opportunity to uh to uh uh I'll give you the opportunity to uh, elaborate on 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 uh, what we're saying here. Okay. All right, caller, how are you? Uh, I'm very good today, ma'am. I, I was uh, uh, last night. I, I met some friends that need healing at the Messianic Temple, at the Messianic uh, Jewish Synagogue. Uh, Jesus's name in Hebrew is, is Yehoshua, and uh, Yehoshua. Yehoshua Hamashiach the Messiah. Yeah. Yehoshua Hamashiach, Hamashiach the Messiah. Yes. Okay, that's Jesus' name in Hebrew. Is that is that what you say? Yes, yes. Some people say Yeshua or Joshua, even Joshua. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, Yeshua, Yehoshua. Okay. Uh, state your name, please, and where are you calling from? Uh, well, my name is, is John, and I'm from Las Vegas. Okay. But I'm, uh, but I'm calling to, to bless our country for prayer, and my friends, Diane and, and, and Steve, they need healing. Oh, and, okay. And... Uh, uh, we're, I'm praying for our country because Americans need to wake up 
There's so much corruption in our country, we're making it difficult for the rest of the world. I can, and we we we, we got to stop doing that. I, our our, our military is out of control. In our State Department, this has been going on since World War One and World War Two, and they're trying to cause trouble again. Okay. So we, we, we need Americans to wake up to Jesus because the Chinese have woken up to Jesus and the Japanese have woken up to Yehoshua, to Jesus, and Americans need to wake up to Jesus. All and right. We need to straighten out our own country and pray for our country and get the bad leaders out, the misleaders out. All right. Well, John, thank you so much for your comment, and, and I'm going to have my uh, guest to elaborate. Uh, we're going to hang up, but I'm going to have you stay tuned and keep listening. I'm going to have my guest to elaborate on Yehoshua the Ma ha Mashiach. Yehoshua HaMashiach. Yehoshua HaMashiach. I'm going to have my guest. Okay. You're all welcome to come to the Jewish temple, to the, the Jewish synagogue. Okay. The Jewish synagogue. Okay. It's up on North Ranch, so you'll find it. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm going to have my two guests. One is calling in from Mississippi, so I'm going to have them to uh, elaborate on the name that you just gave us, okay? Yes, yeah, God bless you, and, 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 and uh, yeah, our Father, Lord God Almighty, is the power and the glory. He is our healer and our protector. And right. He is our source, and he is our center. All right, thank you for calling in, okay? Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Bye. Okay. Um, Yehoshua Hamashiach, Brother Stewart. Oh, yeah. Um, I have heard that name uh, pronounced. Uh, I can pronounce it. So just for me, just say Jesus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just for me, just give out to know the name on the head and give them my man what we should be saved for the name of Jesus. That probably okay. is the name in in that language, but, you know. Okay, so that's what wrong with Mr. Rowe right there. You <laughs> say you just call it what you say. Okay, you think you know who you're talking about? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, listen, gentlemen. Uh, well, Bishop, go ahead and elaborate on that. Your, your, uh, your well, I don't have no problem with it because uh, because the language is interpreted in different kind of ways. So okay. I have respect for everybody's language, but I, but I speak English. I was born in, I was born to speak English, so that's what I speak. Okay. But but I have respect for everybody else's language because it's all the same. Okay. So basically, what you're saying is Jesus is the is the English version of Yehoshua Hamashiach. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So listen back to the attire. What we were discussing uh, before the caller. Uh, men's women wearing pants. Uh, Bishop, do, do you teach and under your belief that women should not wear pants, shorts, pedal pushers, jeans, dungarees, slacks, or any other clothing design like men's wear? Well, just like the, the man of God said here in, in Mississippi, is um, that's according to the word of God that we teach. But the thing about it is we don't harbor over nothing, and we, we let a lot of people come in the way they come in, and then eventually they will grow through the, the Word of God's given, through the Holy Ghost. They will grow. See, our, our message to those people is to preach a solid message. That means that we be quiet, and we live, and we be an example. Then if okay. they ask us, and then it's our opportunity to okay. tell them. Okay, so what I'm asking you right now, I'm asking both of you gentlemen right now, is that a rule in your church, bottom line, where the rubber meets the road? Is it a rule in your denominational belief that women are not supposed to wear pants? I yes or no? I, I wouldn't say... No. Wait just a minute, uh, uh, Brother Stewart. Bishop, yes or I no? I don't want to sound like I'm contradicting myself. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's that's our rule. It's just that we teach according to the word of God. When when when, when people is brought out, they have to grow into maturity. But when you become a godly woman, uh, you you do away with the world. We, we okay. cannot conform. Can to the world. women wear pants or not? They do not supposed. To. They can wear what they want to wear, but they do but not. But they're supposed. not supposed to wear pants. Right, but they can wear what they want to wear. Okay. We don't stop nobody from coming in our church wearing whatever they want to wear. Okay. We don't, okay. we don't stop them. Okay, you don't tell them they can't come in here. We, but we don't your teaching them. says that they should not wear pants. Well, it didn't specifically say pants. It just said pertaining to a man. Wear anything pertaining to a man. So, so you can and figure that out through the Holy Ghost. And that's considered to be pants, right? Isn't that considered to be pants? 
anything that pertains to man because men were pants because they was war and they were soldiers i okay. women wore their dresses he, and that's just started in the early 1900 women started wearing pants okay so you know because see that, back in the day they did not wear no pants uh, I, would, I, I would like some callers to call in and help me out with and, this one right here because uh 702 uh call in and, and talk to me and these gentlemen about women wearing pants under the auspices of a religious teaching and the reason why i'm asking asking for some help in that area bishop and uh and uh brother stewart is because um a lot of people say that women in churches women didn't wear pants but they have it sort of different in different beliefs a woman can wear pants outside the church but she can't wear them to the church okay so and then some say a woman should never ever wear pants ever at all so i need the callers and the phone lines are ringing right now so we're gonna let these colors get in on this conversation because i need some help right here you know i'm a woman okay now i'm just saying for myself now i'm a woman and i, I wear pants you know but i don't wear them all the time i wouldn't wear them if i was going somewhere to worship or something like that you know wherever i might choose to go if i'm gonna go you know but other than that you know you might see me in some pants so are you saying under the auspices of your teaching and belief apostolic are you saying that a woman if she's because back in the bible days it looked to me as though the men wore dresses no well what was that they was the robes. robes okay everybody I'm going to put it like this. Everybody wore the same thing then. So now we got a change in, 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 in attire. Uh, uh, we got a change in in, uh, in in the way people carry themselves. So how are we going to fit in here? Well, well, let me say this here. We, we can't got look, two callers on the line. We cannot look at man's culture. We got to look at the culture of Jesus Christ. Okay. We all got to adapt to the culture of Jesus Christ. Okay. Hold on, Bishop. I got to take my caller. Hold on. Hello, caller. How are you? Hey, how's it going? All How's right. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Thank you, David. Where are you calling from? My name is Philip. I'm calling from all states. Okay, Philip. Go ahead. Speak on it. First of all, I want to say I listen to your show a lot, and I appreciate you, and I appreciate the, the listeners and everybody who comes on the show and share the word. Thank you. Um, uh, today, though, I'm listening, and um, I'm hearing about the uh, women wearing pants thing and everything. Yes. And as I agree that women do not wear things pertaining to men, but like you mentioned before, men did wear things similar to skirts, right? Back in the time of Israelites, uh, back in our days, they wore things similar to skirts. Right. And then later on, we became, became wearing a pants. So in the same way now, they make pants pertaining to women. Uh -oh. Like none of us are going to go put on some women's jeans ah! pertaining to women. You so gotta help me now. They can wear, they can wear them, right? They can wear them pants or the women's pants, and we have men's <laughs> pants, and it's not a big deal. We don't need to be trying to... Um, it is so much more that we should be worrying about other than that. Okay. Now, um, I heard before that y'all were talking about women preachers. And I heard the women a couple of weeks ago, and they're talking about preaching, and I wish I could have called in then. Well, you I didn't. Do, <laughs> I do agree. I do agree with the word that women should not be preaching and having authority over men. They can teach women and children all they want. There's a reason why the most guy has it set up that way, and we need to play it out. Now, fella, why didn't you call in during that show? Why didn't you call in? Well, I have Bible studies every week on the Sabbath, so, you know, uh, sometimes I listen and I got to split away and study, and so, you know, it's just, it doesn't work out sometimes. So I'll okay. Day, though. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I got another caller on hold, so I'm going to take this other caller, and I'm going to have my guest to elaborate. I need my guest to just say, look, Bishop, you're sitting here going through the motions. Just hold that thought, okay? Because this gentleman that just said what he had to say, just keep it in your mind, because I got another caller on hold. All right, Phil, look, thank you so much for tuning in to the Ball in the Show. I really appreciate you. And Thanks for calling in. Stay tuned now. You better start calling in more often, too. You're here, brother. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Hello, caller. How are you? How are you doing? I'm okay. State your name and where you calling from? My name is Ernest. I'm here in Las Vegas. Okay. I'm okay. I'm from Ohio. Okay, Ernest. And I'm what? retired military, but. Okay. I've, I've been in the world. Uh, uh, at least two and a half times. Okay. But okay. the, uh commentary that I read on in the uh, scriptures about the culture of that time with that people were into cross dressing and prostitution and women were disguising themselves as men to get into the temple. Oh they cut their hair. Ooh. 
had to wear men's clothes to get into the temple. And when was this? This was in that culture at that time. Okay. And it's a historic fact. Okay. Okay. That's why uh, the uh, early church was saying, don't be doing that, because it was uh, deceptive. Okay. Okay. Because it, it was a culture. So what about now? What about who? What about right now? Well, you had her man for that. That's scientific. That's biological facts. But the culture at that time was that women were cross-dressing. They were cutting their hair and wearing men clothes to get into the temple. Prostitution. Okay. And that's why the early church was saying, don't do that. Okay. Uh, turn your radio down just a little bit. Turn your radio down just a little bit. We're getting a little feedback. Yeah, but, you know, the feedback was that was the culture. Women were doing that. Okay. Okay. That was the culture. They were cross-dressing. Huh. All right. Well, let me uh, allow my two guests to elaborate on what you just said and what my caller before you just said, okay? God bless. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. Okay. And the thing, uh, Bishop, you just, you just you're just squirming in your seat, so go right ahead. <laughs> and, and the thing about it, we want to be able to identify uh, between male and the female. Okay. But and I want you to start with my first caller. Start with my first caller. Get his... Elaborate on what he said first, and then go to the second caller. What the first caller said. Yeah, the first. Yeah, he was talking about. Um, he don't see nothing wrong with it. But see, the thing about it is, uh, we as being Christians, Christ means uh, Christ-like or followers of Christ. And the only way you can be a true Christian, you have to be baptized in Christ's name and filled with Christ's spirit. If you have not the spirit of Christ, you're not his. So now a Christian is to follow Christ. So we got to follow what the Word says, and not. Not not philosophizing it, uh, not uh, man's opinion, but we got to go speak. The, the word teaches us how to dress, and we are in men and women. We supposed to dress properly, because when women put on on men's stuff, that carries the spirit. Okay, and but when, now he when said, men put on women's stuff, it carries the spirit. Okay, but now he said that the first caller, the first caller said that. Uh, they make pants for men and pants for women. So but the pants the, that a, that but well, let me finish now. The pants that a woman's supposed to wear, if a man put those on, then he does, then you know, if a woman put on like my husband, if I put on my husband's pants, then I'm I'm wearing men's clothes. Basically, is what I thought. I thought the gentleman, the first caller, Curtis. I think that's what his uh, uh, what was his name? Anyway, the first caller, I believe that's what he said. Philip, that's what he was saying. Right, that's what he was saying, but that's the that's the uh, public, that's the world opinion, and you have to understand the ways of the world is is incomplete. But in Christ, we are complete, so we got to do a Christ culture. Okay. We can't tap to the man's culture. Okay, let me let uh, 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 my brother Stuart. Brother Stuart, can you elaborate on that for me, please? Oh, okay, yeah, I'm gonna take it this way. You have a uh, clipper when you, when you cut your hair. Clippers was intended for a man to uh, cut his hair, but, but women started using it to edge up. You know the the the, the, rip, the back of the head. It does, it's not a pair of men clippers and a pair of women clippers. So when the when the pants it came from men pants, it was, it was designed first for men, but then they said, okay, well look, let's let's make women pants. But it wasn't originally it wasn't originally women pants. Oh, so you saying uh, originally women from the very beginning women wore. Dresses 100% of the time. Because you had the robes, but you had the men, what they would do, they would wear their sash one way, and then women might wear their sash another way. Okay. Look, let me take this caller. <laughs> Hold on, we got another caller. Hold on. Hello, caller. How are you? I'm good. Okay. State your name. Where you calling from, please? Geneva. I'm from Houston, Texas. Okay. You calling from Houston? Are you listening or watching? You got to be I'm watching. watching. You Hey! <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Geneva, you want to uh, tell us what what what's your what what what? Go ahead, talk to me. 
Well, I wanted to comment on uh, the women's attire. Okay. Um, I'm also apostolic, and I've been born and raised in this. And um, my take on it is, you know, similar to what your guests say. You know, and it's just the thing is, like, I hear a lot of people get an argument that the young man did before the previous caller, and it was that, you know, well, they had women pants and all that, you know, whatever like that. And, you know, even the argument given about the attire, back then but a lot of things as times change we have to change with it you know and the thing for them at that time their attire was dealing with them not pertaining to a man wearing like as brother Stewart stated you know not wearing a sash a certain way or not you know doing the ephod or whatever it may be a certain way but now coming to today's time you're not going to see people walking around the road so we can't say well they wore robes you know because that's not what we're dealing with we're dealing with what society in our time wears and right now in our time, we wear pants and dresses to decipher male and female or who is who and what is what. And the thing is, right now, I mean, like, it was stated before by somebody can't remember who it was, that if a man walked in somewhere with a dress on, we're going to look a little sideways at him like, hold on, brother, you know. But <laughs> we walk in with pants, is okay. You know, and originally, pants were designed for men who went out in the fields and they worked and all of that, and it was never really intended to be put on women. But then it started, you know, as years went on, it adapted and women began to put them on. And then it became, you know, different and accepted. Okay. Listen. <laughs> what was your name again? I'm oh, sorry. Geneva. Geneva. That sounds my mom's name. Geneva, look, I'm going to have to cut you off, girl. I appreciate you calling in, but we're about out of time for the, today's show. But listen, we will be back next week for part two. Okay, but we got to take a quick break right now. We'll be right back. All right. Did you realize that right now, one of every three drivers on the road is cruising around in a state of skepticism? Why? Because they're full of questions about how much value their car insurance company is actually bringing to the party. And the way these drivers are getting answers is by shopping and comparing. If you're one of them, State Farm Agent Mike Whitford in Las Vegas can help you get to a better state. That starts with getting to know you as a person, not just a policy number. Then, Mike can help put together the coverage package that has you written all over it. Make sure you're comfortable with what that coverage will cost and with the level of service you'll get. Not just for Mike Whitford, but from the 68,000 State Farm Associates who support them 24-7, 365 days a year. If all that is starting to make you feel a little less skeptical, now's the time to call State Farm Agent Mike Whitford in Las Vegas at 702-463-2400. That's 702-463-2400. And get to a better state with State Farm. Hi, this is Vladimir from the Las Vegas Queen of Gospel. First of all, I really do appreciate you listening and viewing my show every week. I would greatly appreciate your financial assistance as well to keep my show on the air. Please, just make some type of contribution. $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 or more. Whatever you desire. Please log on to www.wilenotvshow.com and click the pay button. Or please send your check or money order to Wileener, that's spelled W-Y-L-E-A-N-E-R. To 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Suite A3, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110. Also, if you would like to be a guest on the show, please call 702-242-2100 or email me at wileenatvshow at aol.com. That's all for now, and thanks again for your continued support. Blessings to you, too. And this is where the rubber meets the Okay, listen, so we're back. Listen, y'all, the show just goes way too fast for me. And I just want to say thank you to both of my guests for coming and joining with me today. We're going to be back next week, y'all, with part two. Believe me, we will be back. Will we be back, gentlemen? Yes, we'll be oh, back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Brother Stuart, I'm going to try to make sure you get a little bit more talk time than you did this week, okay? Because, okay. you, you know, I, I, I appreciate you calling in all the way from cross country. And I appreciate my bishop here for uh, coming in and sitting with us today. And, and, and I appreciate both of you for talking to us about the apostolic faith and belief. Uh, listen, I like it very much if you uh, if you guys, everybody out there, would just make a contribution to the Wileena Show. Please log on to wileenatvshow.com. That's www.wileanertvshow.com. And click the pay button up there, the donate button up at the top, and make a contribution to the Wileena Show. It would be greatly appreciated to help this show stay on the air. And you can also see me an email at Wileena TV Show at AOL.com. That's Wileena TV Show at AOL.com. I want to say a special thank you to our sponsor, uh, Mike Whitford, and everybody else. Uh, thank you to everybody.
everybody, once again, thanks to all the folks that came out and the people that made financial contributions to the Wallina Show uh, for the anniversary celebration. All of you made contributions. You you are definitely part of the reason why we're sitting right here today again, okay? And you are part of the reason why we're going to be here for another 13 weeks, okay? All right, so um, thanks again for everybody tuning in. And you all know what I always tell you. Next week, we're going to do part two of Apostolic versus Apostolic. <laughs> And I know the rubber gonna meet the road when we come back next week too because I tell you what, these gentlemen have a lot to say and, and I haven't look y'all anybody that's out there watching on WilinTVshow.com here go all of my questions right here on this piece of paper. Okay, and I didn't even get halfway down the line. So y'all know we got a lot to talk about. So tune in with us again next week. And uh, when you tune in next week, I'm going to try to make sure that we cover as much territory as we can. Uh, but anyway, y'all know what I always tell you. I tell you the same thing every week, every time I come on the air. I tell you the same thing. Study for yourself. Study for yourself. There are so many different teachings and beliefs out here. You will be confused. You have got to study for yourself. Get in those books. Get in them Bibles. Do what you got to do. You are to you to study for yourself. Don't wait for the person up front to tell you every single thing you need to know. Study for yourself. I'm Melina the Las Vegas Queen of Gospel and this is the show. This is where the rubber meets the road. See you next week. Did you realize that right now one of every three drivers of the road is cruising around in a still